Hi, my name is Peter Dubois. I'm a graduate student in American Indian Studies at UCLA. I got degrees in math and American Indian Studies as an undergraduate here at University of Washington. My thesis topic is Alaska Native Corporations in Traditional Economic Ethic. I begin this with a joke that uh, ties my thesis into our theme of water, the pointy witch hat story. I'm a Yupik Eskimo from Alaska. The Yupik creation story is that my people were created by Sedna, the evil sea witch. Evil sea witch being a European translation. Um, but a pretty good one. The, the story I use <laughs> is that Sedna spurred the men of her village and married a dog spirit. So the men of her village tr tried to kill her by pushing her off the ledge into the water, into the ocean. Um, she was hanging on to the ledge, so the men of her village cut her fingers off. She fell into the water and went on to rule an undersea kingdom and determines who gets into the afterlife because that's the most believe you pass through water on the way to the afterlife. Meanwhile, her fingers became the seals, walruses, whales, and land animals that the Eskimo live off of. Because she has no fingers, the sins of the world collected her hair. The sins of the world being another European translation, but a pretty direct one. Eskimos believe that you have to live in harmony with your community, with the animal world, and with the spirit world. When there's disharmony, that causes these sins that make Sedna upset, and when she gets too upset, she takes the animals away. So a shaman or medicine man has to placate her, bringing her gifts, and telling her how beautiful she is, and brushing out her hair. Um, Alaska natives in parts that got a lot of rain traditionally wore woven, wide-brimmed, pointy hats that very much resemble a European pointy witch hat. The fact that my people were created by Sedna, the evil sea witch, and traditionally wore pointy witch hats is something I find endlessly entertaining. <laughs> the thing is, if you say you have a witch story, the more adjectives you put in front of witch story, the more interesting the story people expect. So if you say you have an evil sea witch story or a pointy witch hat story, people expect a very interesting story. But if you say you have an evil sea witch pointy witch hat story, that is the whole story. <laughs> so. I'll, Alaska Natives are organized into shareholders of Alaska Native Corporations rather than having reservations. A couple of Alaska Natives from the Northwest Indian College at the table I'm sitting at can attest to this. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, Alaska Native Corporations were created by the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act with the goals of promoting economic development and preserving traditional culture while negotiating the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. Congress wanted the primary goal to be assimilation to capitalism. Alaska Natives wanted the primary goal to be preserving traditional culture. So Alaska Native corporations have two goals, promoting assimilation to capitalism and preserving traditional culture. For the most part, those are opposites of each other. <laughs> My family has shares of Cook Inlet Regional Incorporated, which is the Alaska Native Corporation that is comprised of Alaska Natives who are living in the Anchorage area when and the, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act went through. Siri pr pursued these two goals by providing cash dividends and distributions to shareholders and letting shareholders decide to what extent they want to adopt capitalism and how much they would like to preserve traditional culture. In the year 2000, Cook Inlet sold their Voicestream stock when Voicestream got bought by Verizon and provided a special distribution of 500 per share to shareholders. Most shareholders have 100 shares, so got $50,000. I'm doing a case study of how Siri shareholders use this distribution, in what ways did they use it in capitalist uses, in what ways did they use it in traditional uses. Um, and I, I tied my pointy which had story joke into it by making an argument that creation stories and traditional narrative influence worldview and morality which in turn influenced economic ethic. There's emerging scholarship on economic and morality, morality in terms of decision making. In addition, there's emerging scholarship on native capitalism. Alaska Native Corporations take 70% of the money they make and use it for community development or money to members or some combination, similar to a tribe with a casino. Rational capitalism says that you use all resources to increase production, to make more money, to use more resources to increase production to make more money ad infinitum. Um, and I'm making the argument that from a Yupik perspective, for my particular thesis, I'm focusing on Alaska Natives who make up Siri.
but um, generally speaking, a lot of indigenous creation stories involve an element of the world being somewhat dangerous, arbitrary, and unpredictable. So the Sedna story tells us that the world is a dangerous place. It, it doesn't necessarily make sense to open a factory because the world doesn't follow rules that make sense to humans. The spirit world doesn't follow rules that make sense to humans. The men of Sedna's village tried to impose their rules on her and that resulted in her having the power of whether there's food available and the power of whether Eskimos get into the afterlife. So the spirit world and the physical world don't necessarily follow rules that make sense, but social relations follow rules that make sense. So taking 70% of money made and using it for community development or money to members is a way of investing in community and social relations. So I've been interviewing Alaska Natives who receive money from the distribution by phone. I also posted a survey on Siri's Facebook page. I, I find it entertaining and fun to use Facebook as a central part of my research. <laughs> um, and I've been looking at ways that Alaska Natives used cash to reproduce social relations and promote traditional values. Cash, money, currency is thought of as something that depersonalizes transactions. There's a belief, a general assumption that traditional economic systems which involve barter and social credit were very personal and built around social relations and the use of currency is a very impersonal thing. But a lot of Alaska Natives gave money to family members for a specific use. Mom, when she got the money, gave me 200 to buy clothes. A lot of people I interviewed gave money to relatives or got money um, from relatives to buy a car or fix a car or buy furniture. In Eskimo, Yupik Eskimo um, culture, providing for a relative for a specific need is a very traditional activity. And giving money to a relative for a specific need is a very personal use of money. So even though it's an exchange of cash currency, it's a very personal, um, traditional use that reinforces social relations. And Alaska Natives also used money in capitalist ways, um, using money towards paying off a mortgage. Um, the Cook Inlet website spotlights shareholders who use the money to open a business or go to school, but there were a lot of traditional uses as well, so my thesis is examining what are traditional uses that series shareholders use the money for and what are capitalist uses. So that's my topic.